Hi. Hello. Uh, welcome to today's podcast. Um, this one's gonna be a little bit of a weird one, so I'm gonna already preface this right off the bat that my thoughts, I have a lot of thoughts and feelings about everything that's kind of going on, and I'm going to try and do my best to coherently make this to get all my thoughts out and for them to all make sense about everything that's going on. Um, but before we get to that, if you are listening to this via iTunes, hi, thanks for listening in. If you want to watch the video format of this podcast, you can find it on YouTube um, under Reviews by the Blonde. That is the YouTube channel that I have. And for those of you who are watching, hello, um, you can find this podcast on iTunes. Um, I have set up with coffee and water off to the side here because a it's so freaking hot here right now in toronto and i'm melting just a little bit so much so that i didn't even bother to put on any makeup on because it's just too hot i would just it would all melt off my face so i just like filled in my eyebrows just so i had some you know features enhanced on my face um but besides that no makeup today um i have I had such a reaction to everything that was going on on YouTube and Twitter last night that I actually made notes I wrote down on cue I grabbed cue cards um, last night I was watching spill Sasha's video on Shane's response to I guess the beauty community and everything that happened with drama and Sh and Jeffrey and James and Tati and I guess more or less the one thing I want to make very clear from the beginning of all this is that to some extent all of that drama I just don't care about I don't know these per people personally so I I feel like a lot of the times whatever we end up getting whether it you know whether we get responses from each of these individuals um, you know it's going to be some version of the truth um, and I don't know I I don't I grew out of the like celebrity fandom and obsessive culture Many many years ago when I was you know a young teenager. I think I stopped at probably like a, a preteen That's when I stopped really like reading into like gossip crap and what and like years ago was prop what would be referred to now as drama or tea I just stopped looking into any of that stuff because it really just didn't pertain to my everyday life. So I Don't know these people. I probably never will um, if I do one day okay, then maybe I can get some sort of truth out of them then. But honestly, at this point with today's podcast and today's conversation that I wanted to have, it really doesn't pertain to necessarily all the drama. And it really, I don't have any interest in addressing all the drama that's going on with Jeffrey or James or Tati. It, it doesn't really, none of that really none of it really matters to me and it doesn't really bother me to be honest because again I there's so much being thrown out there that it's almost impossible to keep up with all of it and to then try and figure out what's real and what's not and who's telling you it's like the mental gymnastics of it all isn't worth it or that's not necessarily how I want to spend my time and my days trying to figure out who's telling the truth or who's not at the end of the day how they're treating one another i think the only thoughts i have on the entirety of the situation is that these are grown adults point blank period all of these people that are involved in this situation are grown adults and if they can't or haven't realized or figured out at this point in time that the more they put out on the internet, whether it's Twitter, whether it's YouTube, you, YouTube videos, you are feeding into the machine of the drama and the tea and people are going to pick apart every response. It's going to perpetuate the arguments and at the end of the day, people are going to get hurt, which is what we learned. Or at least, 
you would think that's what we learned from Dramageddon. And you would think that these adults would put their phones down, they would get off the internet and have these conversations behind closed doors or separate from the internet. I understand briefly touching on what I've seen going on, unfortunately, on the side of Jeffrey's drama. You know, if for those people who spoke, I don't want to bat, I don't want to sound like I'm bashing on the people that have come out against Jeffrey. If your last resort is to throw out your feelings and emotions in a video format because you can't uh, somehow get a hold of Jeffrey and have a conversation face to face, I mean that's unfortunate. It sounds very immature on his part. Um, and if your last resort is to get on the internet and share your thoughts and feelings hey, you're free to do it. I'm free to do it in what I'm doing right now. And you're free to do that as well. In my personal opinion, if this was a personal matter, I can't ever imagine my knee jerk reaction being, I'm going to post it on the internet because it, come acro it comes across very pass aggress passive aggressive. It's just very immature and it's just not a healthy way of dealing with things. Granted, these people live their lives on the internet. They share a lot of their lives on the internet. But unfortunately, when you do that, you are putting yourself on an open platform. Which means, when you do that, you, as much as you have your right to share your opinion, so do so do the rest of us and so does everybody else so if you can't handle that you can't handle the possible criticism that's gonna come your way or people simply asking you questions or and in shane's case where it's probably into the thousands if not millions of people repetitively reaching out to him with the same questions unfortunately this is to some extent, this is a part of the job. This is a part of the world that you have entered in posting content online. I think that's all I really have to say about it, the drama aspect of this. Um, I more so wanted to talk about my feelings in regards to Shane and my thoughts, my thoughts and my feelings in regards to Shane because I, after I watched that video, or while I, while I was watching it and after I kind of sat with it for a few minutes, watching Spill Sasha's video talking about Shane's response, it kind of, at the end of it all, it really felt like a slap in the face. And I'm gonna explain why. I have been and watched YouTube since the birth of YouTube. I have been around a long time. I'm much older than maybe I look to a lot of people. Um, but I remember watching YouTube from the very beginning when it was created on the internet. And years, years later, I remember watching finding creators who were pioneering the way of what YouTube to some extent is today and posting and creating content and posting videos and at some point in time I found Shane's uh, channel and I remember watching Shane Dawson TV I think that's what one of his channels or his channel was called initially and I remember watching the skits and the daily videos and eventually I dropped off because the content no longer fit what I wanted to consume daily and I kind of dropped off for a couple of years and then picked back up when he was making the food videos and then the conspiracy videos and in the last couple of years I picked back up and I fell in love with Shane all over again. Now I don't mean that romantically, I don't mean that in any weird way, but just as a person. I don't necessarily agree with some of his thoughts or his opinions, but I did enjoy and I have enjoyed to some extent the way he chooses to share his thoughts and his opinions via video. To some extent, I enjoy it and I just like millions of other people have watched and tried to support him via watching his videos for many, many years now. So when the birth of the series happened last year, I was able to relive my like fangirl days and I don't even think I was this much of a fangirl but watching the whole series had a special like place in my heart because it was it was finally a chance 
for I think the diehard Shane fans to see him win at something in a big way where he could financially you know basically retire for the rest of his life and be able to create whatever content he wants to continuously without worrying about you know paying for things or whatever this that and the other thing I think that's so for me my thoughts on the series last year the reason I wasn't so offended or bothered about the fact that the series didn't have all the drama in it really didn't phase me. I think the only thing that confused me or left me questioning or wondering was the whole break-in thing that eventually was explained in that later video. I guess in what would have been that last video that had the compilation of all the like edited out parts that we didn't see in the whole series that was really the only thing that I was like what was that all about and they answered it uh, Shane and Rylan answered it and you know showed us the videos um, as far as all the drama and the spilling let's be real at the end of the day there are probably hours and hours of content it's probably I wouldn't be surprised at this point been deleted but there is probably dozens of hours of content that does speak to what was going on with Tati and James and then Jeffrey and all the drama but at the end of the day I think that well first of all we're never gonna see that if it's not again as I said it's if it's not been deleted we're never gonna see that um, I highly doubt we'll ever see it maybe if somehow Shane's computers get hacked or whoever or again if that content still actually exists because we have heard one side has said that it doesn't exist the other side says that it does exist at this point to me again it's not relevant whether it does or doesn't exist I think again at the end of the day the series to me represented that that moment where Shane got to win and we all got to get a well not all of us but some people got to walk away with a physical something that we got to wear every single day because as a person that wears makeup on a regular basis I was really excited to not just have a t-shirt or a sweater that I could wear on a semi-regular basis but to have makeup products that I could wear every single day that was definitely a win that was really cool to be able to have something that is more I have more relation to like it's it's more uh, it's it's a piece of product that I get to use every single day versus wear every couple of days or every other or every week or whatever um, so for me I wasn't really all that but hurt about not seeing the drama um, did I feel like it was one big commercial for the palettes I think the only time I felt that way to be honest was when all the shit hit the fan with the Shopify website and it crashed because I spent six hours trying to, to get through on the website to purchase the products to only I mean after the series like the video came out in the series to find out that they sold out within a half hour so I think in the time that all of that was going on that was when I felt the most not necessarily betrayed but I felt like I kind of got scammed in during this whole series but at the end of the day I ended up going to my local Morphe store and I ended up getting my hands on the palettes there and even even after all that like I kind of the emotional stress of you know trying to spend hours online to get this products I got over that and once I actually even used the products they weren't very good to be honest um, for whatever reason my palettes and my shadows I found were extremely chalky they're almost impossible to blend on the eye um, half of them are either super chalky or I found some of the colors um, excessively actually dye my skin that's near there here nor there it just depends on what dyes or whatever products are in the shadows so that's not really bothersome but the part that really actually bothered me out of all of it was the fact that the product wasn't that great which is really odd and confusing considering that comparing to the Jeffree palettes that I do own the shadows and the colors are work flawlessly they don't you don't need any primer you can slap it onto your eyelid with you know just a little bit of either foundation or with or with nothing you can just blend them on 
they're so like they blend effortlessly they're easy to put on where with Shane's palettes uh, with Shane's shadows I find that you have to put on a concealer a primer and you really have to do some ser you have to have a lot of time to work those colors and to actually pack them onto your eye but I find that they're almost impossible to work with so I rarely to be honest at the end of the day use them and even after all of that I wasn't that bothered because I was maybe to some extent but to be able to physically have something from one of my favorite content creators that I have been watching for over 10 years honestly I wasn't that upset to have something that I could you know spend if I had the time to work with and you know whatever I still have a product that I can still semi use um, and I feel like there even in the series there were plenty of videos of people crying and genuinely upset that they couldn't get the product not that they didn't get to see all the drama unfolding but that they didn't get the product so to the argument that everybody's upset that they didn't get to see the drama I'm not a part of that group and I don't pers personally care I don't want to see the demise of other people and maybe that's just me being all trying to sound maybe that sounds too pure of me or maybe that just sounds very let me gather my thoughts because um they're escaping me right now maybe it's just a very innocent way of looking at it but i don't necessarily want to see the absolute life destroying moment of James. We all saw it. I don't want to see it again. I don't want to see unfold. I don't care about the details, to be honest. I think that whether or not Shane had a part to play in any of it, that needs to be solved behind closed doors, not on the internet. I don't care to some extent. I don't need to know if these people have apologized to one another. They need, at the end of the day, they all need to be able to go to bed and sleep and live with themselves with what they've done in their lives. I don't need to know whether or not they've, whether or not he was a part of it or not. That's just my personal opinion. That's how I feel. I don't care if he was a part of it or not because I think it would speak more in volumes if he has done it behind closed doors in regards to apologizing to James. Again, if he did something or didn't do something, I don't know. It's like, I don't know how many more polite ways I can say that I just don't care because again, these people don't really hold any weight in my day-to-day -day life. Um, but back to Shane, in regards to how he responded on Twitter, I am grateful that Spill Sesh did a video on his response and actually read through it and showed all the text on the screen. Um, because first of all, I have a Twitter account, but I almost never use it. Twitter is one of those apps that I just never got into really using it. And I never really, I use it from time to time to like see what's, to get like immediate news or to find out what's going on. I will flip it open, but to be honest, I don't really use it. Um, and even though I follow Shane, I didn't see those respond. I didn't see, I didn't get any sort of notification or I didn't see the response initially. So without watching that video, I would have had no, no idea that he posted the commentary that he did. So I'm grateful that Spill Sush did do a video on it because I think she did a pretty neutral and semi-neutral and fairly uh, thorough video on his response. And I am grateful that she did um, go through the whole message because it is quite a long message and I think in Shane's I guess this could be in his defense My thoughts again on his response for the most part is he's right He these people are adults and he has no control over how they all act they he isn't going to be responsible for how Jeffrey reacts or what Jeffrey does, even if they're friends or not. He can check him behind, again, behind closed doors. And if he chooses to be friends with him, that's his prerogative. That's, it's his life. If he wants to have, you know, Jeffrey in his life, that's his choice. Are we all allowed to have some sort of feelings about it or respond to it? Yeah, if you continue to respond to it and continue to react to it, then 
we are allowed to respond to your reactions or to your comments because you keep putting it out there. You can be friends with somebody and not share it with the internet. Just saying, that is a possibility, that is something that you are able to do. And it's this whole mentality, this whole oversharing culture. This is only something that like, we've experienced in the last, I don't know, five, six years. This wasn't a thing t 10 years ago. Uh, just saying. I know it may be hard for some of you to believe, but it did exist where we didn't, we actually, I remember growing up in a time where we were told to not say, to not post anything on the internet, to not overshare, to not, you know, share your entire life because people could find you, you know, pedophiles or this, that, and like bad guys could come and find you. That is the era that I grew up in. I also grew up in a time where there was no internet. I remember those days fondly. Um... So that, to, so to that side of his response, that's my feelings. I agree with him to some extent. These are all the people that are involved. They're all adults. He has no control over how they choose to live their lives or what they choose to do. To some extent there, I agree. Um, the overall response didn't necessarily bother me until the very end. And then the next response that he, he mentioned where he actually said, I actually wrote, Part of it down let me take a look he said I deleted everything I'm done and when he said that you can unsubscribe his whole argument about the fact that people who cause drama people who are over the top are the people that have most views and I mean yeah he's not wrong to some extent you know being out there whether it's good publicity or bad publicity you get views unfortunately that's what youtube has evolved to it's not necessarily good um but that's to some extent what it, it has evolved to he isn't necessarily wrong in saying that we can unsubscribe and subscribe to whoever we want to because i mean yeah the um I think it just misses the mark in the sense that it kind of feels like you're missing the whole point of why a lot, why you have fans. You're missing the point of why a lot of us have watched you for many years. Why a lot of us have, have stuck through all the controversies and has have stuck through all you know, the shit that you said that wasn't that great or was wrong or this and the other thing. It reads to me like you are, I mean, first of all, I have to say, I found that his whole response, the initial message and the response afterwards, where he said he was going to delete everything because he's too sensitive and that he's going to delete it from his timeline, this and the other thing, all of it read to me like a teenager throwing a temper tantrum and somebody who yeah it just reads like a temper tantrum sorry i had a thought and it just escaped me let me see if i can get it back no can't get it back okay um it just oh it read to me like such a knee jerk reaction response is it first and foremost i would have personally would have appreciated tenfold if Shane had gotten off the internet for a month or more whatever he needs to figure out his emotions and his mental health or whatever is going on with him personally um if you are feeling so sensitive to everything that's going on I feel as though personally what the appropriate thing would have been to do is to put your phone down get off the internet, do what you need to do, either see a therapist, spend time with your friends, spend time with your fiance, spend time with the people that you love and love you as well. People that, you know, reinforce healthy, a healthy mentality and maybe healthy habits in your life. And then come back, let's just say in a month's time and make a video explaining your thoughts and your feelings. I hate texting. I, I think I've grown to absolutely hate it even more in the last year and I try and avoid doing it as much as possible for the reason that text on a screen 
is like the saying that has existed for many many years about photographs. A photograph says and speaks a thousand words or a hundred words or whatever the saying is. That's what text on a screen to me is as well. You and I could read the exact same text on a screen and take it completely different ways. Unless you extensively explain yourself through words or text, it's very difficult to pick up on the tone of what you're trying to say. And sometimes, and a lot of the time, it can be misconstrued and it can come off not so great. And that's how, again, Shane's response came across to me. It came across like a slap in the face and not that great. Um, the reason it came across like a slap to the face to me is that I, the fact that he is so adamant about getting out of the beauty community, he's no longer going to make any products. Um, initially, my thought was, okay, well then if you're going to go that route, then you better, I would, uh, my initial, again, my, my knee jerk reaction is, okay, well that's your feelings and this is how you're feeling is, I would assume that after all of your products are sold on JSC that you are no longer going to produce any more of your makeup products, that all your products are going to be taken off the the company's website because as far as, you know, the beauty community goes, JSC, Jeffree Star Cosmetics, is a giant part of it. It is a makeup brand. It is a makeup company. So what you're saying is you are going to completely d delete yourself and delete and stop producing all, any sort of content or products with JSC. And you are going to take yourself out of this world completely is what I read initially from that response. And the reason it felt like such a slap such a slap to the face to me as a fan who's been on Shane's side for over 10 years is that again the whole series that you created last year was all about the beauty products and that's what I was so happy and excited to see when you cried I cried I got very emotional about it and there's a lot of straight up I mean last night I got a little bit emotional about reading it I didn't cry because at the end of the day there's a lot more serious things to cry about that is going on in the world today and there are a lot more important things and things to there there's a lot more to cry about than you know some makeup and some drama with again people that I don't personally know um but to be so invested in this series and to support you with spending hundreds of my own dollars to purchase the products that you put so much time and effort into and that you were so proud of and that meant so much to you all of a sudden it's so simple for you to just type a bunch of text on a screen send it out to the world and just be done with it and just delete it off your timeline like it didn't exist and it doesn't matter that's where it really didn't sit right with me personally it really upset me, especially considering two days ago, well now, it, two, yeah, Friday, two days ago, I spent an hour trying to get through on the JSC website to purchase and spend more of my money to buy your makeup products, to not only support you, but to get my hands on great products. Or, well, hopefully round two, maybe be, maybe these these other products will be better than the first round to be honest rather than you know putting that money in spending it with a brand like morphe i wanted to support you i put in all that time and effort to support you and to now all of a sudden for you to just like snap your fingers and be like oh well i'm done with it it was like well what did i just spend i think I spent with the first two palettes it was almost about a hundred dollars and then with the f I bought four products on Friday and the I haven't done the conversion and I haven't seen the conversion and with shipping and duty I don't know how much it's gonna cost but for four products I'm going to I bought a liquid lip I bought the uh, slime glossin and I bought two of the put it back shadows so for four products, four very small products, it's probably going to cost me, wait, I did three, fingers, four fingers. 
Um, it's, it's probably going to cost me about another $100. So I've spent almost $200 of my own money, which, don't get me wrong, I made the decision to spend the money. It's already done, like, it is what it is. It's done. I've spent the money. Um, it's gone. I'm now going to probably have to wait. I don't know. I, I, same with the cremated palette. I bought it. I just checked how long ago I bought it. I bought it um, over a month ago and it's still not here, uh, which just terrifies me because I feel like it's going to be in a million pieces or half melted by the time it shows up because it is so freaking hot. Um, so I'm very terrified of what these products are going to look like once they actually get to me. But I was planning on doing separate videos on all of that on a different day. I apologize for the noise in the background. It's... I have my window open and I think they're doing something with the garbage cans in the back of my building um, but yeah I that's where it just put a very bitter taste in my mouth now am I gonna get over this yeah probably because at the end of the day you know again it's it's drama that doesn't involve me personally or it doesn't necessarily affect my personal life but it does make me question you know, I actually was recording myself through the whole buying process of uh, those products on Friday. And I think I brought it up a couple of times and I jokingly said, oh, I don't think I'm going, I think I could do this maybe one, I could probably go through this for Shane one more time in regards to trying to purchase his products online and having so much, like putting so much time and effort into it. Um, and I said that I could probably do it one more time. Honestly, at this point, I don't think I am, at least I, for the foreseeable future, as far as obviously beauty products go, we're, we're not going to get any more beauty products, which at the end of the day, m my feelings towards that is, it's really, it's a shame. Because, you know, what Shane created with Jeffrey was amazing last year, or at least I thought so. Or I think so. I still think so. I think it was, it was great to see to beginning, middle, and end what it takes to create wonderful products and something that hundreds of thousands of people can walk away with to see how makeup is made and to see products that I use every single day, see how they're made. And it just... To see, to hear him say that he's never, he's out of this community, he doesn't want any part of it, I think that it was a very knee-jerk reaction. It really is sad because I think in the future, Shane probably, if he were to create more, he would have done his logo, with his logo and everything, he could have created so much more amazing products and for it to just be wiped away so quickly and the decision to be just like abrupt is disappointing to be honest it's just all of this feels really disappointing um again I, again i'm a grown adult that i can get over this shit and that it's not really gonna bother me am i gonna still watch shane's content to be honest probably Am I going to ever purchase products from him again? Will I get on here and say I'm never going to buy any of his products of again? I mean, I've been eyeballing some of his merch, to be honest, for since last year. Am I more inclined to buy it now? Probably not. Um, majority of the factor is, is that it costs so much money for me to buy and a lot of other people to buy the products that you guys put out. Um, yes they're great quality products but to order and buy products from the u.s it costs a fuck ton of money for four makeup products what would have probably costed me i don't know on the high end maybe 40 bucks at like a sephora or maybe morphe or a nyx store i spent a hundred dollars and it's it really does feel disappointing that Shane responded the way he did. And then to get to the like last or secondary response that he put out there with, 
that he just she's he's gonna delete everything and that he's too sensitive for all this again Shane I don't want to add to your strike like if Shane if you watch this if you hear if you the chances of this are probably slim to none um, but Shane if you do watch this I think as a as a loyal fan I would have again much rather you just maybe respond in the way that saying to some extent that you need the time off the internet and that you need to go away for a little while because if it really if all of this is really affecting you to the point where you can't sleep you're crying your your emotions are all are all over the place and this is coming from a person that's overly sensitive and very emotional and very dramatic as well so to some extent i feel your pain a good thing to do is to take a step back sometimes and if you have to ignore it for a period of time, whatever is going on on the internet, sometimes you just need to do that. And coming back after a period of time and giving a thoughtful video response, and even the amount of times that you've already put out videos where you sat down and you shared your feelings and you got emotional and you cried, that meant more to me than again, seeing the text on the screen. Even if you had done a video where you said you were done, you weren't doing this anymore, that you can't handle the pressures that come with dealing with all the drama that, of the beauty community that it seems to create, I would have probably appreciated that more than you know being told after I've spent hundreds of dollars that you're done, you don't you don't want to deal with it anymore, that this is just ridiculous and this that and the other thing. I don't know. It just. I don't know. I think that all of this could have been handled a lot better, um, in my opinion. And I think that it kind of, again, it just feels at this point, it just kind of feels disappointing. It feels disappointing to have gotten that kind of response from Shane that we did. Um, I'm just going to read over my notes because I want to see if I touched on everything that I wanted to talk about. See, a lot of, I initially thought about doing this podcast or a video separate from the, you know, like logistical videos that I was going to do with the beauty products. I was going to actually sit down and do a podcast talking about like, are you able, the conversation, having the conversation of can you separate the creator from, you know, the product and consumerism. And it was going to be more talking about a little bit more about like the Jeffrey side of things. Um, but honestly, at this point, it's really hard to ignore and get past all the, oh, of course, now the garbage truck shows up, so I apologize for the background noise. I don't know what that is. What is that? I think they're also doing construction around my building, so I apologize. Oh, no, I think it's the garbage truck, so I apologize for the noise that's probably going to happen in the next few minutes. Um... Uh, uh, uh. Oh, I think another thing that crossed my mind that I wrote down here while I was watching Spilly's um, videos was, or video was that we're fully like, it's impossible to ignore as well that Shane made a fuck ton of money last year. I mean, just from the basic math that we could all do in regards to the numbers that they showed us in regards to the makeup products themselves and then the merch and then all the i'm assuming ad sense that he got off of the videos from the series shane made a lot of money last year so again i'm not bitter or upset or I, that it didn't leave a, any particular bad taste in my mouth as far as um, the fact that he did make a lot of money that doesn't really again that doesn't really all that doesn't really bother me all that much but again it just adds to the weight of the way he chose to handle his response yesterday it, uh, we a lot of fans chose to support you and purchase your beauty products and you're telling all of us basically that you're done you're deleting everything and you're not interested in being a part of this world anymore it kind of again adds to the feeling of like this felt kind of, like that response kind of had a kind of was a slap to the face so you know you're welcome for the 200 dollars 
or whatever after you know to the almost two hundred dollars that are going into your pocket you're welcome um yeah to be honest i don't know if i have anything else to say it just all of this has kind of left me feeling kind of shitty and it's disappointing and it's kind of annoying to some extent that this keeps i mean getting brought back up um via the comments that jeffrey keeps making i think james did a pretty good job of just expressing his feelings and saying that like you know i think in the past that he he said you know words were said behind closed doors and either he got an apology or he didn't get an apology i don't know again the fact that this keeps being brought up it just doesn't seem relevant anymore to some extent and to some so to to that i understand that shane is probably feeling very frustrated that he's continually having to respond um i don't know i don't really know what else to say i think i got everything out that i wanted to say um yeah i mean i was really excited on friday to get these products that i purchased from shane's collection now i'm kind of just deflated about it and again now i'm just kind of back to being nervous about whether or not this stuff is going to come back come in one piece or if it's going to be completely melted or destroyed um because the shipping for whatever reason especially well with everything that's going on with covid unfortunately still um everything is really backed up or it's still taking a really long time so i mean that explains that but um which means that it's probably gonna take like two months for Shane's products to show up to me excuse me which means by that point they're probably going to be melted or in really bad shape um so that's to realize that after spending a hundred dollars on some products is also kind of like hard to digest but here we are um yeah I think that's it I think that's all I wanted to say I you know I, I don't know if anybody is gonna ask me this but you know what would kind of help this situation like what would at this point like what would i want from Sh what would i want shane to do or what would it, how would i want shane to respond honestly am i upset that shane is creating very different content or he's going back to creating content or making a, a horror movie that he wants to make not really i think that again that money that he made from the from the beauty side of you know last year he choose he should choose and he has every right to choose how he wants to spend it and if it's making a horror movie have at it it's his life's work like this it's basically last year from what i understood of the series he made all the money that it would it should have he should have made in the last 10 years but he he hasn't for you know whatever reasons he explained in the series so for him to have the money that he you know has he should have had a long time ago let's be real he's always he's created content for us for many 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 years um so to some extent he deserves to have that money even the 200 dollars that i just gave him and he has every right to do and he he has every right to do whatever he wants with that money and if he wants to make a horror movie with that money great i hope that it works out and i hope it ends up being a great movie and i to some extent i kind of can't wait to see it um i'm not bothered that he's jumping into a whole different world i didn't expect to be honest i didn't expect shane to continue to make video beauty video content would i have liked a you know a full face of makeup here and there video sure absolutely maybe if he created a future palette or future product products or products in the future and if he had made videos using those products yeah that would have been great being able to balance the the beauty like product side of his life and then his horror side of his life if he had been able to find a way to do both i would have as a fan i would have absolutely no issue with that and i think it would have been amazing to see him be able to do both 
But to see such a hard shutdown, I think now is where it's disappointing because again, I honestly think Shane would have created a lot of amazing products in the future. And I really hope that sometime in the future he reconsiders making products, whether it's with Jeffrey or not, or separately. I don't know if he would ever consider doing it separately. Um, maybe doing some sort of collaboration with Morphe or uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't really know what else to say. Yeah. I mean, am I going to still keep watching Shane's content? Probably. I don't really want to unsubscribe because I don't know. It's it doesn't it doesn't bother me here nor there. I like his content. Like even the video that he posted on whatever day last week. Um, I enjoyed it. I still enjoyed it. His laugh makes me laugh. He makes me feel really happy and I, I enjoy watching his content. I unfollowed, not that it really freaking matters, I think. Um, I did unfollow Jeffrey and I unfollowed him on Twitter mostly because his content doesn't necessarily resonate with me anymore. Um, I don't really have an interest in watching his videos, which is why I unsubscribed and I don't really have any interest in hearing what he has to say So I unfollowed him on Twitter even though again, I never use Twitter I only followed him to see updates on whatever products and everything that was going on last year um, But as far as Shane goes like I don't want to unsubscribe because I want to follow his content but I think that yeah, I guess the only the last thing I could have to say to Shane is maybe just do better in how you choose to respond and maybe clarify how you choose to respond because your frustration and your emotions may be you know very heightened right now um, and you shutting down you know and not agreeing with the way everything was done last year you know to some extent I applaud you for it to stand up for yourself that's great but I just think that, again, text on a screen can be taken a million different ways. So I think you should stick to what you do best. And making videos is a much better way of communicating your thoughts and your feelings. Because sitting and watching or even sitting and listening to somebody talk, you can feel, you can hear and see the way somebody's voice, the tone of somebody's voice and the way somebody feels and the way they're communicating, it comes across better through something like a podcast or a voice memo or whatever, or again, a video. Um, if you are really struggling this much as or if, from what I gather from, again, from what you've posted and kind of the, the vibe or the tone that I got from your video or from your, uh, from your response if you're really struggling that much I really hope that you take the time to again do what I said in the beginning is take the time to really separate yourself from the internet or separate yourself from the people that are causing you this much stress it isn't healthy and as much as friends are important to have what they bring to your life you gotta weigh that out and you gotta figure out what's more valuable to you as a person and what's more valuable in your life for you your mental health and for your future um so yeah i guess that's my thoughts um i don't really think i have anything else to say or to add um yeah this is kind of a disaster and it'll be really interesting to see how everybody chooses to approach this from moving forward um, I really hope that all of these people involved start responding to whatever's going on in their lives behind closed doors not exposing it for millions of people to judge you and you know give their own two cents on but to actually you know sit down in person and try and be genuine and thoughtful and considerate and compassionate and yeah that's my thoughts um so thank you for listening and thank you for watching um i will be doing videos in the future in regards to whenever those beauty products do 
arrive I am going to do separate videos for them because I want to do a breakdown a very logistics kind of video talking to you guys about how much it cost me if it accrued any sh duties or fees or whatever if everything shows up in one piece what the quality of the products are um, and then we'll go from there I'm also still waiting for my bathing suits from Zoffel. They're supposed to be here tomorrow, uh, so whether it's going to actually show up tomorrow or the day after, that video will be coming up soon as well. Um, so yeah, that's what's coming up in the future. And uh, I hope you guys have um, stay cool, because it's really hot out there. At least it's hot here in Toronto. And yeah, uh, see you guys later. Peace out.